Hello, I'm Tom Stapledon, and I've got another talk for you on behalf of the Friends of Williamson's Tunnels. This time I'm going to tell you something about Williamson's Triple Decker Tunnel. This is a complete nonsense of a thing, and we've got absolutely no idea why it was constructed. Three layers of tunnels, one above another, going down possibly 80 feet in the ground. Um, we're going to start here with this uh, fairly modern plan. This is a satellite view of the area that uh, is involved with the, the central tunnels of Joseph Williamson, this area here. Now, um, the Williamson house site is this area here. And this is the Edge Hill to Lime Street railway cutting running through the middle of this land. And down here is the site of what used to be Joseph Williamson's workyard in his day in the early 1800s. There's still the remains of a cobble yard there. It had uh, several uses, uh, the scavengers, scavengers yard uh, in the 1800s, followed by the Lord Mayor's stable yard. And then it became derelict in the 1990s, locked up and forgotten about. Part of the cobbled yard is still there, and it's now the site of um, the Williamson's Tunnels Heritage Centre. And running right through here, this white hatched area, this is the line of Williamson's Triple Decker Tunnel. And it ran right underneath the full length of the stable yard. And it ends up here pretty much underneath the Heritage Centre's big glass fronted building and underneath their reception area. But as you can see, it's been dissected. When the uh, railway cut their tunnel through from Edge Hill to Lime Street in the 1830s, they dissected it at the lowest level. And then later in the 1880s, when it was opened up into this massive cutting, it cut right through all three levels of the, of the tunnel. So we have a small section of it on our side of the railway, and the greater section of it is underneath the coupled yard in front of the Williamson Tunnels Heritage Centre down there. This is uh, a composite photograph. It's um, made up of several, several different photos pieced together. Um, the angles might be a little bit odd, but basically this is the stable yard as it looked up into the 1990s. Stable buildings still here and here still intact, some modern buildings at the back. And in this corner, a couple of um, low level stable blocks that um, are still in use as part of the um, uh, heritage center with the entranceway being through there. And behind this mass of trees is where the um, double tunnel was poking out through the hillside and they now have this big glass fronted building over the top of it. So that, uh, that's to give you your bearings. But underneath the stable yard running right across there, and across the other side of the railway, over to our side, runs the triple decker. Now, I don't know too much about the timing. This is long before my time. The information I've got has been gleaned from other people who were around at the time. And I can tell you that even though it's maybe only 20 years or so, memories do fade. And um, the photographs are very useful, although there weren't as many taken in those days as you would like. Um, but memories do fade and uh, people don't always remember everything that they saw at the time. This is a, a rather large uh, collapse in the middle of the stable yard. It was derelict at this time and this is a cobbled yard and as you can see something has caused a collapse right in the middle there. Um, some of the stable buildings up against the side of the railway cutting and there's that collapse again. And finally a large hole. And um, that was a very obvious sign that there was something interesting going on below. Uh, in the days before, they had very much idea of what to expect from Williamson's Tunnels. They'd started researching, but um, there wasn't very much accessible apart from the two tunnels poking out of the hillside in the corner. All the rest of them were buried and um, they were struggling to learn more about them. So this, um, I'm not quite sure of the timing, it may have been around 2000, 2001, 2002, they decided to uh, try and get into the triple decker and this was the route they chose. So from that collapse hole there, they dug down, 
the square hole there into a chamber uh, with, a, with a collapsed roof. And in the bottom of it, they found an arch, I believe. And this is what they did next. This, I think, is where they've knocked out some brickwork in the side of an arch going down lower. And uh, there's not a lot of room there, but of course they didn't want to do any more damage than they could help. So uh, just enough room for somebody to squeeze through on that ladder and they're in a lovely brick arch. So that's the same ladder and that's what it looked like below. As usual in all of Williamson's underground structures, they've been uh, either backfilled with rubble or holes have been made in the roof or there've been collapses and uh, lots of material down there. Uh, making very difficult to uh, find your way around and difficult to know exactly what's going on because they haven't had an opportunity to excavate it. But this is now two levels down, I think, and uh, it turns out, I'm pretty sure, um, they were into a side tunnel rather than the main triple decker at this point. And having got down there, they had to move on. And uh, I believe this wooden ladder was constructed down there in kit form because it wasn't possible to get a ladder down through that entry hole. So they knew they had to do some climbing. So they constructed this ladder while they were down there. And you can see here what was going on. They had to get past this uh, massive rubble here, squeeze underneath the side of that arch. And then there was an opportunity to climb higher up into a higher level above this one in the uh, in the main triple decker tunnel i think there's a lot of guesswork here i have picked brains and i've tried to get the best information i can to go with the photographs but it isn't at all clear i wish i'd been there uh, so there's the base of that ladder and it's just underneath that arch and there's the upper end of it so they squeezed under the side of an arch there into an upper level and i think they're now into the top level of the main triple decker tunnel that's looking up into it from below it all looks quite dodgy really but um they were real explorers in those days um i think this is probably a bag with a camera being passed up the ladder to uh, chris isles there from uh, our tom murgatroyd into the higher level and that's the higher level in the uh, the upper level of the triple decker and uh, you could begin to see now that this is quite a substantial tunnel. Uh, you can tell by the shape of this arch, uh, this was quite large. And I believe that um, when the London and Northwestern Railway Company were driving their cutting through in, 18, in the 1880s, they were obviously in a position to look into the two open ends of the triple decker tunnel, tunnel that they'd cut through. And I believe they commented that the, the Williamson Triple Decker Tunnel was so big that it would be quite possible to put two lines of railway tracks in there. So I think that makes it about 25 feet wide. So uh, quite substantial. And this is just the top level. There are two more levels below it. And they went right down as far as the railway went, uh, or possibly even lower. And I think that's probably about 80 feet down in the ground uh, as it passes through this point. Uh, there, I think they're starting to put in um, uh, electric lights. These be 110 volt work lights, probably powered by a, a petrol generator, I would think in those days, they didn't have any mains power. Still in that uh, upper level. Uh, shining the torch along the tunnel, trying to see what, uh, what can be seen in the distance. But of course, masses of um, rubble fallen down, come through holes in the roof. You can squeeze through in many places, but there are other areas, I believe, that were completely blocked and they couldn't go any further. There's a big, uh, big pile there, obviously come down through a hole. And I believe in the direction of the uh, railway cutting, it was completely blocked off and they couldn't get anywhere near uh, to the railway cutting side itself, um, as, far as, as far as I'm told. Look as if they're uh, checking out a broken bottle or something that they found there. And you can probably just make out behind, um, there's a collapse here in the arch. Doesn't look at all nice place to be, to be honest. Uh, looks quite dodgy, in fact. 
And in that shot, you can see it more clearly. This is uh, some kind of a side arch that comes to a point, um, very much like our um, arch to nowhere in Paddington. And this is just collapsing away and a lot of material has fallen down. Whether that's a tunnel that goes anywhere or whether it's just a, a simple side arch that's blank, I've got no idea because there do seem to be, um, uh, well, there seems to be at least one or possibly more of these things, which are very like our arch to nowhere on level two at Paddington. Uh, this one just ends in the bedrock, beautifully constructed little side arch in the side wall of the main tunnel. But this one is rounded at the top whereas the, um, the one we have at Paddington uh, comes to a point. Very similar construction, though, and uh, we have no idea what they were built for. Men just practising their skills, perhaps. This is looking at it, I think, from the other side. There's the arch on that side, looking from the other direction. More spoil pouring down through a hole there. Group of the lads there just posing for a photograph uh, underneath that same arch. There it is again. And um, I could point out some people here and name them. There are quite a number of people who are working uh, uh, both FOWT and the, the other group, the, um, uh, the Heritage Centre people were working together at that time. Um, but this gentleman here is John Wilde. And uh, he is the gentleman who passed me most of these photographs. Uh, and did his best to describe to me what I was looking at in each photo, because he was here and he took quite a few photos. But his memory has faded, and he, he's the first one to admit that they weren't doing things as well as they should have been. In his words, he said, basically, they were so excited to have just got in and found places like this that they didn't really spend too much time taking photographs, taking measurements, drawing maps, and all that kind of thing. And then uh, over time, the memories become rather fuzzy, unfortunately. This is uh, Jim Moran, who's still with us, uh, Andy Phillips, and uh, I don't know, I don't know all these other gentlemen here, but I believe this person here is uh, Mark Williams, who was uh, a good friend of uh, John Wiles, but uh, unfortunately, he died very recently. Another photograph standing underneath one of those big holes in the roof. Got Chris Isles here, Tom Murgatroyd, Alan Casey, and uh, there's our Bill Douglas. Looks as if he's fallen over and wet his knees. And uh, this, I believe, from, uh, from uh, Chris, who's standing here with the tape measure, is not in the uh, triple decker itself. It's in a section that runs from the end of the triple decker, where it, uh, it, it joins in a, in a sort of a T-junction. This uh, is a chamber that runs all the way down to Smithdown Lane underneath one of the stable blocks, and it ends at this wall here. But then you've got this uh, small continuation passage, which I think they said looked like it was probably a storm drain running into the drains in Smithdown Lane. There's an enormous hole there in that roof. And um, you may notice here from this photograph, this is, this is not actually in the triple decker. This is in one of the uh, side arches. Um, and you can see the difference here because this is constructed from stone blocks and not brick as the, the main triple decker is. And uh, you can see it more clearly perhaps in this one, big stone blocks. This one looks like it may be a dead end side tunnel, but I can't be sure. Before we leave it, I'm just going to show you this plan, which was drawn up around 2002 for the developers that were moving into this site. It shows the stable block there against the uh, railway cutting, which is no longer there. The, these stable blocks here are still in use by the um, Heritage Centre, and their entranceway is in there, and their reception is under there. And this is the big glass-fronted building that they built across the opening of the double tunnel, which is running into the hillside there. And a single tunnel goes in that way. Those two form the main part of their tour for uh, visitors. And this is the line of the triple decker running across. And as you can see, it runs right underneath the uh, reception area and past the uh, glass-fronted building. And then uh, another tunnel runs right down here to Smithdown Lane, right underneath the building. That's in the last photo that I just showed you with Chris Isles. And um, this, I believe, is um, a side tunnel where they broke in through that hole in the cobbled yard and made their way 
through and then up into the top level of the triple decker at that point. This end, I believe, is completely blocked off. This end, they managed to get across, but some of the roof was quite dodgy in places. And of course, it continues on the other side of the railway. So we're going to go over the other side now. This is uh, our area, FOWT's side of the uh, railway. Uh, many of you may have seen this photograph before. This is um, the 1880s photograph of the open end of Williamson's Great Tunnel, which we haven't been able to find. It has a massive uh, brick wall built across it now, and we've failed to get in. But um, when we were trying to get in in 2003, uh, we also knew that the triple decker, that's the top level of it, going at right angles, was very close by as well. And so on that occasion, when we had a little time on the, on the land to uh, have a poke around, some of the lads decided to try and get in there. And they dug this trench down. It went down about 10 feet and uh, down a sloping ramp. And they managed to just squeeze in under the portal, under there somewhere of the end of the triple decker. And they were in. And that's what it looked like inside. This is looking towards the spot where they got in. Um, I'm not quite sure. I, I've got a feeling that this is Bill Douglas's wife, I think he told me. Right behind her, I think, is the spot where they slithered down and just managed to squeeze in to the triple decker. And you may be able to see that in this area of the triple decker, we have stone block roof again, not bricks. And um, I don't know how much of it is made from stone blocks, but this end definitely is. Uh, and yet we have this um, rather strange feature you'll see in all of these photographs because they didn't, they didn't get very far because of all the rubble. Two massive great brick ring beams, only about four feet apart, spanning right across the tunnel, very close to its end. And the only, well, we could guess that perhaps the stone blocks look quite cracked up there. Have these things been put in just to strengthen it? We don't know. We really don't know. But there they are again. You get a good shot of them there. And you can see all those stone blocks above. But the area between those two rings does look very much as if the, the stone blocks are quite badly cracked. That's um, Peter Goodwin there. He's taking video. Uh, he was our uh, uh, video person who, who took uh, lots of footage of our activities and he produced the virtual tour DVD. Um, you might be able to see a rather large hole up there and that I can tell you has been knocked through deliberately. Uh, in a minute you'll see another photograph uh, or two photographs that show that. Um, and here I can see that they've got tools, there are shovels, there's a pickaxe, and it looks as if they've been excavating there. I don't know for sure, but that looks like an excavation that they've done. And I believe that uh, a feature that we have on the Williamson's house site, called, which we've nicknamed the, um, uh, the Cave of Squeeze, uh, might join into the side of the triple decker here. We've now traced it 32 metres length of it right through to the land behind our site about 18 feet below our ground and it would appear that it's probably joining in at the side there and they do think that they saw the end of it under there so uh, we're hoping to get in there sometime very soon anyway whether they created that hole or not it does look a bit like it doesn't it i mean uh, little owl there with uh, with a shovel in his hand now then in um i'm not sure when we got them but we we were sent a um, a series of really interesting photographs taken in uh, 1954. The council were going to build flats on the land uh, below uh, our site where the triple decker runs and they wanted to know what lay below the ground because they, they knew something about the Williamson tunnels and they didn't want to build over the top of them. Uh, it would have been quite dodgy for them. So they had a contractor come in to investigate where the tunnels lay and they dug holes all over this land and um, they discovered the triple decker. That, I believe, is the open end, the triple decker, the portal. And this hole is the hole you were looking at a moment ago. And there it is. That's the same view we were looking at in 2003 when we got in here. And that one is 1954. They used a wooden ladder and they came through this hole that they created. They smashed their way through there. You see some of these blocks have come from that. So, uh, 
it's funny that we got into the same spot and uh, it was recognizable. So uh, I'm going to finish off with this. This is what that piece of land looks like now. This is the Williamson house site, house frontage there, uh, fence the back of our plot, steep bank down to the lower ground here, and right underneath this plot here is where the triple deck is running. It runs from about there, the end of the wall. That's where they got in, just under there. And it runs right through the railway cutting and continues on the other side, right up to the Heritage Centre um, reception. So we want to get onto this land, which uh, we're working on with Liverpool City Council to give us permission to occupy this. Then we want to uh, create a way down there into the end of the open portal, and then uh, we'd be uh, able to excavate that and see where it leads us and see how big that chamber is below there. And of course, we'd be happy to bring all the spoil back up the slope uh, through gates at the back and uh, into the skips because that's what we've been doing for years and we're quite happy to go on doing it. So that's the story of the Triple Decker as I understand it so far. I hope you found that interesting. Thank you. <laughs>